As the nation awaits the outcome of this election, a lot of Americans are feeling, I would say an understatement, but feeling very anxious. Yeah. yeah. History shows us that passion and partisanship have always been part of the process, and people will find a way to come together again. And you know who's going to make us believe this for sure is presidential historian and author of Leadership in Turbulent Times, Doris Kearns Goodwin. She studied the state of the nation from its darkest days to its unifying comebacks. Doris, we were just talking about how we all need perspective in this moment, because I think everyone is looking around, and they're looking at people as the other. They're walking down the streets in their communities and seeing things boarded up. And quite frankly, you wonder how we can come together. Is there anything in history that shows us, like, we've actually been either here or in a worse place before, and we've come back? Without a question. I mean, history shows us that we've lived through worse times before, and we've endured them, and we've come out stronger. I mean, think what it was like in the early days of the Revolution, when we were losing battles, or the early days of the Civil War, when 600,000 people would die, or years of living through the Great Depression, or the early days of World War II. And yet, we now know the end of those stories. We know the Revolution was won. We know the Civil War ended with the Union restored and emancipation guaranteed. We know the Depression came to an end, and that the Allies won World War II. Too. They felt the anxiety we're feeling now, not knowing the end of the story. But when you look back at history and you see us emerging through those times, it gives you hope, it gives you perspective, and it provides lessons. That's, that's why I love it so much. Doris, we love to listen to you talk mm -hmm. about history because it does provide this comfort. And you also have studied leadership throughout history. I wonder if we are the leader of our home, mm -hmm. if we're a leader in our school, in our communities, what lessons from history can we do to bring some peace to our communities? You know, I think it's a really wonderful question, because I think leadership is exercised everywhere we are. It just gets magnified in the presidency, and even more magnified in a time of crisis. And we know what those qualities are. I've studied these great leaders over time. The first is maybe humility, the willingness to acknowledge errors and learn from your mistakes, and to be able to grow. You have to grow through your interaction with other people. And maybe the second, and it's so important today, is empathy. Having that ability to see what other people are feeling, to feel what other people are feeling, and to understand different points of view. That's so critical today when we have these tribal politics. And then there's resilience to be able to get through trials of fire. Ernest Hemingway said, everyone is broken by life, but afterwards some are stronger in the broken places. Mm. And then you've got the need to create a team around you, wherever you are, who can argue with you, question your assumptions, bring different points of view to bear. And then what you're really hoping is that you've got a word that can be trusted. There's an integrity in your word that people can trust in it. And finally, that you develop an ambition for self when you're younger. That's a natural thing. But somehow it grows for the family, for the community, for the country. It's something larger than yourself. If those qualities are there, we have leaders and people responding, we're going to be just fine. Oh, I like that. I like it. I feel like we have, mar we have our marching orders. Doris, take us back again, because, you know, we have, we have families who aren't speaking to one another. We have neighbors who have signs up in their yards who don't even want to look at one another. Um, and I was curious if you, with your knowledge of history back in the Civil War days, when people actually fought on opposite sides, um, how did they ever come together at the end? How did it work? Well, think what it must have been like. You're absolutely right. Families are divided. The whole country is divided. You've got two different nations, the Confederate nation and the Union. But I think that's where leadership really mattered. The, even on the eve of winning the Civil War, what Lincoln does is he doesn't give a triumphal message. He comes out and he argues that both sides read the same Bible, both prayed to the same God, neither's prayers were fully answered, and then he calls for reconciliation. You know, with malice toward none and charity for all, let us bind up the nation's wounds. It's that kind of leadership that we need to draw out the part of us that's hungering for letting these divisions heal and begin slowly the process of becoming, as Harry said, the United States of America again. What unites us is still greater than what is dividing us. We just have to bring that to the surface. We saw a huge voter turnout, mm -hmm. something that shows us that our democracy is still very much valued. Mm -hmm. I wonder, when you see that and you see it in action, do you feel hopeful? And even though, as Hoda just said, people, neighbors can't even mm -hmm. sit at the same dinner table, mm -hmm. families are divided, like, how do we overcome that and still think, okay, our democracy is strong? Mm -hmm. 
Well, what that massive vote shows us is that people have taken a, a considerable part in the process. And maybe then the government won't seem like some foreign body out there that we hate or we love. And so, as a matter of fact, then we become, we, are, we the people are the government. So that's a really hopeful sign. We've got to do something about how we consume our media, because what happened in the 1850s was that you only read your partisan press. So if you're a Republican and you're reading about Lincoln, who's at a debate with Stephen Douglas, they'll say, he was so great, he was carried out on the arms of his supporters. You read the Democratic news newspaper, and they say he was so terrible, he had to be dragged out of the room. And that's what's happening to us now. We have to figure out how to get facts that we agree on, then we can argue about the opinions. But I, I say, I think the hunger is there, our participation is there, all sorts of obstacles were placed before us in this pandemic, and people voted, and especially young people voted, and that's the future. If they start believing and trusting in the process, then maybe we can get a new start on this division and, that is so terrible for us to and, have to endure. And just quickly, one, one last question. Doris, if you were to sit across from the man who would be president right now, and if that person was already decided, what would be your ABCs? What advice would you give him going into these next couple months? I mean, I think the first thing would say that words matter. So the tone of how you speak to the country is really important calling for that healing. Second, actions matter. I'd tell him, or it has to be him right now, I guess, <laughs> tell him to bring as many people from the opposite side right into the White House as soon as he can, to create a team that has different points of view in it so that you've got that team of rivals like Lincoln had. And most importantly, to become president of all the people. Go to the states you lost. Talk to the people who didn't support you and begin to use the power of the bully pulpit of the presidency to set a new tone for the country. Leaders can matter. That moment that FDR came into the inaugural, and he had a different point of view from the previous administration. Suddenly, headlines said, we have a leader, the government still lives, and the mood of the country changed. It's extraordinary what leadership and a following people can do. And it's up to the people themselves. Every real change in our country has come from the ground up. So we have to demand something more from not just the president, but from our people in Washington, that they start talking. Maybe they should all live in the White House together for a couple <laughs> weekends <laughs> and see if they can get something together. Yeah. Just bring them together. That's uh, what LBJ did. He wouldn't let them go until they come out with some oh, sort of oh, compromise. Oh, right? Well, there you go. Doris, you Doris, have provided you. us with so much hope. Thank, thank you. you so much. And please, you guys, if you get a second, listen to Doris's master class. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's awesome. Oh. Doris, thank you so much for having me. Thank you we for appreciate being it here. so much.